absolutely false. Uh, Jesus tells us to occupy till he comes, to preach the gospel to every creature. He told Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply. Um, he didn't tell us to stop our lives or to stop procreating. You know, the Muslims, the reason their religion is growing is because of their ridiculously high birth rate. So, uh, and, and that's with their motive to spread their religion. But no, we're, we're not. Actually, children are an inheritance from the Lord. It says so in scripture. So, no, you should not abstain from having families. And we don't know when the Lord is coming, but we're supposed to live this life with, uh, as a light to the world, train up our children in the way they should go, be grateful for uh, the inheritance of children. And uh, Paul says you can be married or not be married. He's, he chose not to be married because that way he could focus only on his ministry and service to God and his his devotion wouldn't be split. But uh, no, we don't hold off. Well, he'll be here any minute. So we're just going to not we're not going to live. We're not going to have children. We're not going to if Christians stop having kids, Christianity would die, too, because you raise up children and they who's going to be left because eventually all the Christians would die off. So absolutely not. Okay, thank you, Renee. Uh, uh, I'm seeing in the chat room that MJ says he cannot hear Ben. Uh, okay, all right, very good. All right, well, Ben, since we got you talking, why don't you answer the question next? And I, I don't see the link in the chat room, did you? Oh, did yeah, you get... you're right, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, okay. Let me do that right now, real quick. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree with Renee. Um, you know, the Bible, God told Noah uh, to be fruitful and multiply, and uh, I he never, you know, that was never, never said stop doing that. <laughs> and so I think we are to be fruitful and multiply. The, the apostles um, didn't know when the end would be, and in fact, they thought the end would be imminent as well. They, you know, they said it was the last days. Um, biblically speaking, it is ever since. Uh, I believe the church was instituted. It's considered the last days. And uh, you, you see no such thing about um, no such instruction just for for people to stop uh, pursuing careers or having children or, or, or having uh, uh, giving in marriage. In fact, there's, there's a, a verse that says in the last days, perilous times will come where people will say uh, forbidding people to marriage, marry. So. I don't think that that's what we should do at all. In fact, I mean, the opposite side of that coin, I guess, would be, okay, well, why don't we just, um, if anyone were to answer yes to that question, well, why why, why don't they, uh, you know, stop going to their jobs? Uh, you know, why don't they just sell everything they have and just kind of wait for Christ's return? Um, no, because we don't know what, time, what when he is coming, and we're not supposed to know when he's coming. So I think we, you know, we occupy, so to speak, until he comes. And uh, I think that, you know, we professional education and career, etc. Those are all things that we can use to serve the Lord and everything we do, we do uh, should serve the Lord. And so, uh, it, 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 you know, we, we should be pursuing uh, an education or career for our own good. We should be doing it for the glory of God. Um, so, you know, we should never cease doing that. That would be my initial answer. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Sister, Sister Lisa, what do you have to say? Okay. Um, yeah, the only thing I would take issue with so far that was said was, I don't want, I'm not trying to attack Sister Renee, but her last statement that she said about uh, Christianity would die off if we stopped having children, I that I don't believe that. And the reason is, is because it's the witness of the Holy Spirit that converts men. Uh, people are not Christian because their parents are Christian. They they are believers. Uh, because they come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that's why we have people from all different walks of life that are former everything, from atheist to Muslim to Buddhist to everything else under the sun, because they, they weren't born into Christianity because of <clears throat> their their earthly birth. They were born into Christianity because of faith in Christ and because of the witness of Christ of the believers on this earth who witness of his uh his glory and his magnitude. So 
that would that would be the only thing I would add. I, I agree with everything else everyone else said. I don't uh, agree that um, we should, you know, stop living life and just wait, you know, in the corner for Jesus to come. No, we're supposed to be uh, earnestly contending for the faith, and we're supposed to be a, a witness unto all men in the world, um, you know, even even unto death. So, um, well, that's my statement. Hmm, okay. it's, a good it's a good distinction to make. I hadn't thought somebody would take it that way. Uh, but I was thinking, I was talking about bringing up children the way they should go and having families of faithful Christians. It would be a lot smaller community without that. But yeah, I, I'm glad you mentioned it because less somebody think that you can inherit being a Christian. So it's important mm -hmm. that you mention the second birth is important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that um, both of your statements uh, have uh, some truth in it there that, that uh, usually Christians will raise Christian children, uh, at least that's our hope, and that we make an effort. And sometimes I think they're more likely to come to the faith uh, if they're raised in a Christian family than, than if they're not. Uh, but obviously that's not how you become a Christian. Uh, you're not born into it. Uh, physically, born into it spiritually. Uh, but I do think that it would have an impact on uh, the total number of Christians, uh, uh, but it certainly wouldn't stop it because uh, there's still a lot of people in the world that, uh, uh, I don't know, as for me, I, I didn't come from a Christian family. I, I came from a Roman Catholic family, but... <laughs> Uh, let's, okay, I'm going to go last, but uh, Sister Heather, uh, uh, I'm interested in your perspective on this because, you know, I've done some study on Jehovah's Witnesses, and uh, I have a playlist uh, titled uh, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses uh, Debunked. Um, so I, I think I know all uh, the history and the uh, the, the problems uh, with it, uh, but from what I understand, they, they are uh, discouraged from even getting educated and pursuing careers because they're saying, why bother uh, when you can uh, sense the Lord's going to come and soon and it, and it would it would be irrelevant. Uh, and, and if you don't put your efforts into education and career and fa families, you'll be able to have more time for your knocking on the doors. Uh, so could you uh, give us your, your answer and include your perspective as a former JW? Absolutely. Um, yes, I can. Um, in fact, when I saw that question, I got a little bit excited because I have a, uh, a okay, go tell daddy you want water. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I have a little bit of, um, background in this and, um, yes, Jehovah's Witnesses very strongly advise that you not get an education beyond what is mandatory. Um, in fact, they even will recommend, and I was recommended um, as a as a young person to quit high school to be to go into full time ministry. And um, before I left home, I was actually an auxiliary pioneer, which means that I had to put in ninety hours a month, um, recorded ninety hours a month of field service work, going door to door. So. Yes, very, very highly discouraged um, to get an education. The only, the only exception to that is if you are studying to be a doctor or a lawyer, in which case you are permitted to go and encouraged to go, um, but only under the condition that you are going to represent the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society and take care of if you're a doctor, um, treat patients who are Jehovah's Witnesses first. And if you are a lawyer, that you will provide services for the Watchtower Bible Tract Society. I, mean, I can't right now. Um, besides that, um, the having children thing, I actually spoke with my, my stepmother who raised me a few months back. And we were talking about my sister who had gotten married and I asked her if if Gina had had any kids. And obviously my my family doesn't really speak to me much at all, but my stepmother will speak to me as long as we're not speaking about the Bible or anything Bible related. But I had asked my stepmother 
um, if her daughter had had any kids. And she said, no, absolutely not. Gina is focusing her life on being a pioneer. And because of that, she's not interested in having children. So it, even having children is discouraged to the point that even getting married is discouraged because they take Paul's words where he, he said, I wish that you would all remain single, but if you're not able to, because of um, lust, then it's better to marry than it is to burn. And so they take that as a directive that Paul is saying, don't get married unless you absolutely have to. So, yeah. Um, but as far as my point of view, because of the way that I was raised in direct opposition to the way that I was raised, I very much believe that we are called to live our lives every day as if Jesus could come today or as if he could come, you know, in our children's generation. I believe, I believe personally that we're, we're coming closer and closer to that point, but, um, yeah, I live my life. I, I planned for, I planned for children. Um, and I plan someday to have grandchildren if the Lord tarries. Um, in fact, I very much would love to be a grandmother. Um, my husband, when, when we got our kitten, our kitten became Christ, uh, Christopher's cat. And because of that, my husband decided he needed to pull out his grandfather name. So my, my husband is old bear and I am Grammy to this, the, this little kitten. So, I mean, we are excited about the prospect of eventually becoming grandchildren, grandparents. So yeah, I very much say, live your life, plan for the future, live every day as if the Lord could come, but also live every day as if you've got time to live it here. Yeah, okay, thank you. I'm, I'm glad you were able to give us that uh, special perspective as a former Jehovah's Witness. Um, I, I don't know if you guys, you guys are aware of this, but uh, uh, I am an actual or uh, legitimate Jehovah's Witness. And uh, when Jehovah's Witnesses want to talk to me, that's what I tell them. I say, you guys are apostate. I'm, I'm, I'm a Jehovah's Witness, and you're not really a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, and that's what really we all are, aren't we? Aren't we witnesses for our great Savior God? Uh, uh, you know, I, I think Lisa has a different view on I don't know if you uh, have something to say about the use of the word Jehovah. I, I know that you object to the word uh, Yeshua. I don't I can maybe give me your thoughts on, on using the word Jehovah. But uh, to me, Je Jehovah is just named for uh, God Almighty. So uh, we are witnesses. We're the real witnesses. The Jehovah Bible and, you know, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, they're the apostate Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, but when I asked the question, um, I just wanted to get a question in. Uh, uh, you know, I feel it's, uh, it's a duty for me to, to try to provide at least one question every week. So I never because I never know how many others have sent in a question. Uh, but this one I thought would be like a no-brainer for everybody. And it, it, it seems like from the answers I was right that uh, everybody has uh, said absolutely false. Uh, and for all the reasons everybody said, I, I, I agree with, with all of that. Uh, and I don't really have anything I could add to it. Uh, I've, okay. heard people, I've heard people say, uh, be so uh, heavenly minded that they think it's wrong to do anything. Like everything, uh, there was a, a heretical sect in early Christianity that said everything fleshly is evil. So you couldn't enjoy anything. You couldn't enjoy family, uh, uh, eating, uh, anything, nothing. Everything was evil, evil, evil. And so a lot of people still have that ingrained that if you do anything to make your life full here on earth, that you're somehow dishonoring God or dishonoring the thought of uh, heavenly. And we, and Christians have been actually accused by, you know, unbelievers of not caring about this world and only living for the great beyond. And so it's an important question that you asked, actually. I, th I think it's an important question. 
All right, thank you. And there, there is a, a very common saying uh, that uh, some people are so heavenly minded, they are of no earthly good. And, uh, but I, I found when I did the, the, the study and the teaching on heaven, uh, titled 50 Hours in Heaven, uh, that uh, really um, it's more common that it's the opposite uh, situation that people are so earthly minded and they don't think about heaven much at all. Uh, we, we, that playlist uh, has 50 hours of teaching on the subject of heaven. I wonder, ask, ask yourself, everybody now, how long could you talk about heaven? I mean, how, how much have you actually taken the time to think about and study and teach or talk about heaven? It's, it's, it's probably the most neglected subject in, in theology, I think. I mean, we, some people, they know a little bit about it, and, and uh, there's really a lot in the Bible about it. But uh, that book by Randy Alcorn is, is the source material that we used for our, uh, our uh, discussion on heaven. Um, but yeah, it seems like most people, uh, it's, the problem is not they're so heavenly minded, they're of no earthly good. They're actually don't spend enough time thinking about heaven because that's, you're going to have so much joy if, if you really study it and think about uh, your future, what's promised to each of us. Uh, we should always be walking around on cloud nine, uh, just filled with just joy all the time, knowing that what we have to look forward to. Um, okay, uh, how did we turn out, Ben? Uh, ben, I don't remember, did you answer the question? I think you did, you answered a second, didn't you? Yeah, yes I did. Yeah. But uh, did you get any, uh, how's it look in the poll and were there any comments in the chat room on it? Yes, we got two comments. Um, uh, the, oops, uh, the questions or the comments were during, during the Black Death in Europe in the 1300s AD, it was so bad that people literally thought it was the end times. Entire villages were being killed by, by plague and yet people still had children. And because of this, Europe lives as well as the USA. Second, if one lost sheep being found, there is rejoicing in heaven. Why stop this due to our limited perception as to the actual end? God will re de will determine this, not us. Another person uh, writes, I believe this matter was addressed in the letter of Thessalonians. The answer was, continue to be about your business and God's business. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I think it's also uh, important for us to understand that uh, even though today, and let's say not just to present, but over the last 20, 30, 40, 50, or in my case, 70 years, we could look at the world and just assume that we're just on the brink and, and that uh, the Lord's got to be returning, you know, any day, any week, very soon within the next couple of years. It's absolutely certain of that. But, you know, there's all kinds of date setters in the past. Jehovah's Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists, and many others are famous for setting these dates and uh, changing their lives around because they're so confident uh, in this return. But this is not a new phenomenon. We, through all of church history, they've always thought that his return was imminent, even in the very first century. So uh, we have to be ready and eager and uh, looking for his return. But... But who knows, it might, it might be 2,000 more years. But I, I, I've done a, a relook into eschatology the last few weeks uh, because Renee uh, has uh, been kind of re reconsidering everything herself. And so uh, it, it's, it's caused me to go back and look at it again. And uh, uh, yeah, it's really, uh, it's, it's, it's something that all people throughout all of history have had this uh, feeling that, hey, he's got to be returning anytime. In fact, remember what P Peter said. He said, uh, the, uh, well, I don't know if I can quote it, but uh, the, the Lord is not slack in his promise, uh, not, not desiring that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And it's, that's his answer to the people who are saying, hey, the Lord is tarrying. You know, he's, he, he's taken so long. 
and he he should have returned by now. So they're they're a wonder, they're questioning whether it's even, you know, uh, this faith is uh, is uh, uh, justified since uh, he should have returned by now. And so uh, it's always been that way. All right, uh, who uh, we we have time for a follow up? If anybody wants to add more to this. Well, I'd just like to say that whenever you and Renee decide to make a video on your eschatological, can't say the word, um, uh, studies, I would love to, to be involved with that if possible. Um, but I was really curious to hear Sister Lisa's um, answer for the question that you asked about the name Jehovah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, or, Lisa, I know that's really not really the topic, but uh, since I said Jehovah immediately, I thought, oh, I wonder if Lisa uh, has an issue with the use of that word. And uh, What's your thoughts on that, Lisa? Well, in short, Jehovah is a transliteration into English of the name Yahweh. And Yahweh is not the name of the Most High God. It is not the name of the Lord. It is a different God altogether. I'm going to put a link in the description to a ministry that uh, has a really detailed breakdown on that. It's called I Saw the Light Ministries. I'd like to invite everybody to go take a look at it. Very scholarly work that he's done in, in detailing this and proving this. But um, that was why I did the video uh, uh, by the same name to tell my experience on how I got burned by the Hebraic <laughs> uh, folk that started all that stuff saying, oh, we really need to return to these, you know, to these other names and start calling on these names. And, and so um, Yahweh slash Jehovah, that's the same name. Uh, I started um, praising that name. I, I changed the name of, of, of the Lord to uh, that name. Now, because people will say, well, God knows who we worship. And that's what I thought, too, <laughs> till I got burned. And I've given my testimony uh, in that video about how the devil showed up. So, uh, you know, all the years I've been calling on Jesus, the devil ain't never showed up. He's fled. So uh, I do agree that we are the true witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think one of the reasons that um, there are those people who will tell you that the name Jehovah which is only found in the KJV seven times in the Old Covenant, was inserted by the Masoretes, who were the authors of the Masoretic text. So it starts getting complicated. But um, if you search it out, there are very scholarly works that have said that this is not his name. And uh, I, I think one of the, the tricks that was done by that was to pull us away from the Lord. Because in the Old Covenant, where it says, Lord, the New Covenant says, who the Lord is, and that this is one of, I believe, the tricks that was done to pull us away from Jesus. So, you know, that's my basic simplification there. Uh, again, I gave you a link to uh, very scholarly work. I shared it with, with Ben uh, several months ago, and he's been researching it, and he, he says, yeah, there is definitely some there there. So um, there are other people who have witnessed to the fact that this is not his name. Um, and like I said, the Jehovah Witnesses have been calling on Jehovah for over 100 years, and ain't none of them saved. So uh, unless they come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, it's not the same God. Um, there's a, a woman on YouTube that, that did a, a testimony. She was Jehovah Witness for, I think, more than good night. Uh, I don't want to exaggerate. I know she looks like she's about in her 50s or so. So she's been a Jehovah Witness her whole life. She was raised in it, her father before her. And she gives a testimony about sitting in her bedroom one day, uh, eating some chips and drinking some tea. And she begins to fade into darkness. And as she's sinking down, she can look up and see like the light of her bedroom and still see the TV that was on that she was watching or hear it rather. And as she's fading down, She's frightened because she doesn't know what's happening. And as she calls on Jehovah to save her, she continues to sink. And then she, she's in this every time she just keeps sinking and she's calling Jehovah. She decides 
she's going to call on the name of Jesus. And then she said when she did, she raised up a little bit. But then she didn't have any confidence in that name. So she don't understand what's going on because they, they taught all kind of stuff about Jesus. And it certainly is that he's not God. So she began to sink again. And then um, as she sank, she said, you know, she just went for broke and she kept calling on Jesus. And she came back up into her body in her room. Now, full disclosure, I think the woman is on like a journey because when I was searching around her channel, it, it doesn't look like that she um, it has faith in the Lord Jesus. But this was her testimony about her experience with his name versus the name Jehovah. So, uh, you know. Uh, there are people who will want to fight you to the death on this. I I, I call them Yahweh. They call themselves Yahweh. And they usually don't even use the name Jesus. They've replaced that with something else. So um, there's some weirdness going on with that. And I stay away from it because of my personal experience and testimony using that name. And I've had other people contact me telling me that they had the same experience. They, they was uh, praising Yahweh. Now, I'm not talking about like, just every now and then saying it, they started praising that name and worshiping that name and the devil showed up. So, you you, you know, you take it or leave it because I'm not, I don't fight with anybody about it anymore. I just put the truth out there and the truth is the truth that'll stand on its own. All right. Thank you. I, um, everybody here knows me pretty well. And a lot of people in the congregation here have been listening to me for years and you know that uh, uh, I I never really refer to God as Yeshua, Yahweh, or Jehovah. Uh, I I actually go out of my way to make a big deal about hey let's let's just use the name Jesus because it's the name above all names. This is what we're supposed to be identified with Christ as Christians. So that's always been my position, and the only reason I use it now, of course, is because uh, when I'm talking to a Jehovah's Witness, I would I could use it in that context, saying that you're not really a Jehovah's Witness. I am, but I'm going to refrain from doing that because I I, uh, I don't really know the uh, the details of uh, that you you have on your video, but I would like to watch it and and learn more about that. But uh, there's no reason for me to use it. I normally, I, I would never do it except for in that specific case where I'm trying to make the joke or point to Jehovah's Witnesses. Do y'all um, remember the movie, The Life of Brian, Monty Python? No, I didn't see that one. <laughs> they were joking about the sacred name, you know, and every time they'd say Jehovah, somebody would try to throw a rock at their head. <laughs> no. Even if I see Jehovah and they're hitting him again, the whole scene is every time he says Jehovah, they throw rocks at him, try to stone him to death. Uh, That's what it's making me think of right now. It's a funny. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I never heard of that one. All right. Does um, anybody want to say more about this question? Yeah, actually, um, not about the question, but I did want to say to Sister Lisa, I'm very excited to watch what you or read what you put up and watch your video on that. Um, I will tell you this from a former Jehovah's Witness perspective. I don't really, and it's not that I've ever really thought about not saying the name Jehovah because of um, my my beliefs that or anything like that, but I just don't feel comfortable saying the name Jehovah because of the what it brings to mind for me. Um, I, whenever I am speaking to the most high God, I call him what Jesus told us we could call him, which is Abba. And, um, for the most part, I see, I see Jesus as the one that I'm supposed to be speaking to. And if I need to speak to Abba, then I address him as Abba, not as Jehovah. Um, it's, it's just, you know, so many years in that false religion and that cult really have hurt that name in my heart, if that makes sense. Um, and as far as what you were talking about um, with this, this woman who was calling on the name of Jehovah, I will tell you from my experience in my own family that demonic attacks happen a lot 
with the Jehovah's Witnesses. And it might, from what you were saying, maybe it has something to do with the fact that they're calling on the name Jehovah. But I have an aunt who didn't let her kids watch the Smurfs because she saw a demon on her wall, um, like as like a reflection on her wall in the shape of a Smurf. And because of that, she'd never let her kids watch the Smurfs when I was a kid. So I don't know if there's anything to that or not. I'm, I'm very interested in looking into your research. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. I don't use that name. And for me, I wouldn't condemn someone for using it, but I don't use that name. I'm, I'm a witness for Jesus Christ and the things that he did on the cross, because that's the way that we get saved. And even if you do believe that God almighty's name is Jehovah, he said, go to my son. So if, yep. if God Almighty points to Jesus, that's where I'm going. Yeah, I'm going to say one thing I will say 100% certainty is that this issue has done nothing but cause division. And the New, the New Testament was given to us in Greek and not in Hebrew. And as Lisa pointed out before, if a name is important to be spoken in Hebrew, the scriptures will say, and in the Hebrew tongue, it's such and such. So uh, I've got a lot of Hebrew rooters bringing this stuff in, along with their legalism, along with the Jewish customs and traditions that are now dead works, and they have divided the body of Christ, looking down on others because they got some information you don't have. I know the original Hebrew name. Well, even if you want to go back to the original pronunciation, it's still in Greek. It's not in Hebrew. So the only thing I can say is that I, I've never known him by any of those official names. It's always been Father and Jesus. And, th and that I'm comfortable with that. And his name is a name above all names. And so I, I don't go as far as Lisa does against the names. Because there's no vowels, we don't know exactly how to pronounce yud hey vav hey the, the the letters. So, uh, and it wasn't supposed to be pronounced. So I I don't mess with any of it. But what I will say, it has done nothing to bring the body of Christ together. It has divided, and it's it's nitpicky and carnal, and we need to stop fighting each other over. Because I have had Hebrew roots actually correct people on my channel for saying Jesus. His name's not Jesus, it's Yahshua or Yeshua. And it's like, you got to stop doing that. You know, the division that it causes. And I really do think it comes from a place of pride. These people insisting that they know the real Hebrew original name and you need to speak it like that. I mean, we went for thousands of years without doing that. And now they're insisting people do that. And I never thought I'd see the day. It's causing division. Absolutely. If it doesn't bring together in, in unity of spirit, it is not of God. If it's dividing, it's not of God. Yeah. Well, um, it's uh, we got off on a tangent, but I think it's a worthwhile tangent to pursue. Uh, I think it's helpful to discuss this. Um, and uh, the name Jesus causes division, and that's really what we're divided over. I, I've, I've made some videos about uh, what I call closet Christians. It's it's a person that believes that oh, you know, I, I don't want to talk about Jesus or faith because it's personal. It's, and 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 if they do talk about God in any in at all, it's always God in a very generic sense, never mentioning the name Jesus because as soon as you mention Jesus. And you're identifying with Jesus. Guess what? Uh, you know, words are going to break out. <laughs> I think people are ashamed to say Jesus uh, for for the stigma attached. Oh, you're a Jesus freak, or you're something, and so they're more comfortable saying Yeshua. What What do you think on that? Yeah, people don't want to say Jesus because they know that it's going to bring on uh, attacks against uh, yeah. against them. But they can say, uh, "I worship uh, Yeshua." It makes them sound like they're special or different or something. But the name of Jesus is what's been given as the name above all names. 
Yeah. Who was it, uh, Lisa? Iesus, right? There was no J. So I E S U. Um, in Greek, Iesus. But what they've done, what they, what the Jedi mind trick they've done on the church, is they told you a half truth, which is that there is no J in English. Now that is true. It was no J for 500 years. What they don't tell you is there was always the J sound, yep. and that the and that the iota had a rule. That if it was followed by a vowel, it took on the hard J sound. So if you go back and you look at for one example, just to prove it, we don't call it the King I Ames Bible. We call it the King James Bible. I have if, it. You go, if you go to the 1611 version where the I's are in there, which represent J, when right. people were reading it, they knew how to, it, it's very easy to read once you learn what the rules are. Excellent. And then. Hmm. And but this is the game they played. So they come in with a half truth and go, see, his name couldn't have been Jesus. Well, so then James's name couldn't have been James and all that. That's when they start replacing him with the wise. And then once they did that, they slid us over to this name, Yahweh. I saw this happen because prior to the Hebrew Roots movement, this mess was not going on in the church. Yeah, and, yeah, I know. Yeah, you're right. OK, so says it with an eye. Yeah, my King James has an I for a J everywhere. My That's right. That's the way it was in the 1611. Because uh, English has gone through its progression of, of changes. And what they did was they said, okay, to end the confusion, because people who were coming to the country, which is just what this country has always been about, is people immigrating here. It was creating a lot of confusion. So what they did was they changed the J. They, they added a hook. Okay, but the J was always there. So these are the games that, you know, if you got to play a game, to deceive people. Is that the spirit of the Lord? If I got to trick you to do something. <laughs> okay. That's not the spirit of the Lord. So the straight up truth is uh, it was an I, but they had a rule that if a vowel followed it, it took on the hard J sound. And that always existed in the English language since its inception. So for them to play these games says something ain't right. It's the same with the W and the V. It depended on what letter came after it. Mm -hmm. They use the they use the V for W's also. You right. a U or a V for the That's letter. Right. Yep. Same yeah, thing. I would strongly encourage people to read that article. That um, it's it's actually an article, like a like a front end article that, it, but it branches off into more scholarly work. But I would definitely recommend everyone re look at that link that Lisa dropped. There, I believe there's absolutely something to it. Um, you know, I find it very difficult. First of all, that, you know, all through the Bible, the importance of the name, you know, whoever believes in his name or believes on his name, why would they have different, why would God give them multiple names uh, to believe on when we don't know which one he's talking about, you know, and um, like, like the Tetragrammaton, for example, that, I think that article makes a very compelling case that it, it basically was Jesus back then too. Um, it's, it's, it's fascinating. And so uh, until someone reads the article, um, you know, yeah, and I, I don't think they can really have they, they don't really uh, under even if you don't believe it uh, I think it's important to read it to understand um just to, to just to again to help you build your your case either way because it's an excellent resource most of them are anti-gospel too all those yes. guys that you call them Yeshua they're all Hebrew roots and legalists they all yeah uh, very religious alone. they yeah they don't uh, they don't like grace so to me I consider them unbelievers. Like I, I do not, because uh, I can't be sure the Holy Spirit's in them because they reject uh, the simplicity of the gospel. So uh, anybody that does that, I don't listen to anything else they say. I can't because I can't right. be sure. I can't say they're unsaved. I don't know. Maybe God saved them. Maybe they fell into error. I can't make that decision. Uh, but I can say it's very concerning, and I certainly won't take them on any other information they have. Yeah, I'm always very suspicious of people who... Who use the uh, Greek uh, or the old uh, Hebrew names like oh you know, uh, just like just even like Shalom and things like that when they're not Jewish it's like it's almost like they're kind of rubbing it in your face like oh I have a closer relationship with God I have a special name of that I use and Hasha you know Hamashiach uh, whatever, whatever it is you know uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah no that is it never ends it just keeps going right. and going and morphing into other stuff but you know Acts four twelve. And Philippians 2, 9, and 11, which is really the theme for my channel. Because uh, once I got burned by that and, and I ended up changing the channel name, uh, 
uh, to for the Most High Jesus, because people were denying that Jesus is the Most High. Yet in the Old Covenant, he's called the Son of the Most High. But yet, you know, uh, and, and in fact, whenever people go, they, they will challenge me on the channel name and I'll say, uh, they said, Jesus is not God or Jesus is uh, not the Most High. So I, I said, OK, I'll tell you what, let's give you an Old Covenant scripture, because that's why you're going to say that. So how about Isaiah 9, 6? His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now, once you can tell me why it says that, you come back and tell me he's not the most high. So, uh, you know, th this this is the kind of stuff that's been going on. It's all to detract from Jesus. And yet we have Acts 4.12 that says there's not salvation found in any other. And there is none other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Now, people want to play games with that. Go ahead. Do so at your peril. But in the new covenant, when it says must I pay attention, because that means it's not negotiable, negotiable. The new covenant is the old covenant revealed. So if, if things were cloudy in the old covenant, you want to see a clear picture. But as the Bible says in Hebrews, Jesus is the brightness of the father's glory and the express image of the father's person. And you can't get to the father unless you go through him. And if the Bible says that that's his name, I would not play with that. Mm -hmm. You know, but people, they'll they make all kind of excuses. OK, do what you want to do. You going to bear it. I'm not going to play with it because it plainly says must be and must means yep. exactly what it means must yep. none other name means none other so when yep. they go what about this name i i said none other well what about that name none other uh, what about none other don't you understand hey uh mark yes. in the chat room lisa said he had demonic like sleep paralysis or something and the name of yeshua didn't get rid of it but he and did. this is what I've been Jesus saying. Did. Jesus got rid of him. Praise the Lord Jesus. That's, that's right. right. And I know that's true because I have seen one of them things like they show on that stupid match commercial that they got going with the red body and the black horns and the black cars. And by the way, that description for the devil of him being crimson red is in the old covenant uh, in his name, Hillel. So, um, when I researched that out, because I was like, how come the ho Hollywood or Hollywood seems to know that he's red? Because I saw one of them things and I'm like, I'm not saying it was the devil himself because the Bible says devils. So there are many of them. But uh, when I saw that thing, I was like, they know he red because they depict him as that with the black horns and the claws and all that stuff. So I went and looked it up in the old covenant and researched that name. And it actually talks about like worm grub like chum it's like the blood from worms that's what he's covered with and that's why he's red so you know this bible is the real deal i mean if, if you can go back and look at something like that and find out that that's why he's red and when he manifests and when i saw one of them things uh i'm like you know, that's why I said the devil messed up when he did that, really, for me, because it's never going to ever convince me, one, that he don't exist, two, that the name of Jesus don't work, because as soon as I called on Jesus, he instantly disappeared. They were, yeah, oh, and by the way, there was no debate. Well, I don't have to go because that's not his real Hebrew name. He disappeared. So, you know, y'all do what you want. You want to play with that stuff? Go right ahead. You'll bear the judgment for it if you're going to be lazy and not search it out. You're going to bear the judgment of you switch it when the new covenant said there's none other. And and as I as Renee so astutely pointed out uh, uh, that I had said every time and I want you guys to look at this for yourself. Every time the new covenant, even in the old, wanted you to know the Hebrew name, it says and the Hebrew name was and then it tells you. But it never did that with the name of Jesus. So. You know, it's like, don't just pay attention to the things the Bible says. Those are critically important. But also pay attention to the things it doesn't say. And one thing it doesn't say is to call on these other names in the new covenant. It's nowhere. You think Paul didn't know about Yahweh or Jehovah? He could have wrote that, but he didn't. Paul didn't. Peter didn't. Jude didn't. James didn't. Are we starting to notice a theme here? But, you know, um, the Bible talks about how these people were going to creep in, unaware, spying out our liberty, 
and insert leaven. So why is it a surprise that this stuff is happening in the last moments of the last hours of the last weeks of the last days? I mean, well, right now. It's, it's to purposely jack up people's faith and remove the power that you have in the name of Jesus. So I implore you, don't be lazy. Prove it to yourself. Search it out for yourself. I don't want you to believe me. Search it out for yourself. 